Well, hello, Jennifer Eason here. And I wanted to just follow up from that New York Nelly, the adventurous. That was a new word for me, adventurous. I like it, but then I don't. What about you? Do you like it? Adventurous. I don't like it for the mere reason that I think it had that really ultra uber feminist kind of vibe to it. Don't get mad at me. Don't come at me, gals, if you're into the feminist movement. I'm just saying for me, I just felt that it might have had an agenda. But anyway, I thought that I would bring some imagery to you to ponder because I want to schedule a live stream for tomorrow. Are you available? Let me know. RSVP. Okay? Because it's been a while. You've, we've been on break, okay? <laughs> but I am planning to do more content on the arc circle. I'm very intrigued with that area right now, as I am with the whole, remember the smoky god? That started the whole thing with the arctic thing. Oh my goodness, I am just dreaming about travel again, because I, I mentioned this on previous live streams, that I'm, I'm, I'm grounded right now, because I, you know, I'm not able to travel. And that was some, I called it self-care. You know, we got into that whole travel movement thing. Everybody was just levels of wanderlust, you know, out of control. But I don't know who's traveling now. If you are, you know, traveling mercies to you. But I'm just not in the market for it at the moment. I do dream of changes happening where it will be possible for me to do that. I'll tell you one thing, the places I thought I wanted to go prior to 2020 have greatly changed. How about with you? Like, drop it in the comment section if you want to go and see places that are in the north, north, north. You know what I'm saying? And it only increased after reading The Smoky God. I mean, that book was just amazing. We still have to, uh, we haven't even had, um, did we discuss it as a live stream, a night class? Let me know because I have to look back. It's been a minute, but I am looking forward to discussing things and seeing how you have pieced together things about the Nelly story because that was really new to me. I stumbled on it in a, in a really strange way. I was, you know how it is. You're looking for something and then you go off on a side road. And that's how I stumbled onto Nellie's story. I was looking in, into the Arctic and I've been, you know, very curious about maps and all of that. So I wound up on this little side road to her story. It's going to be a lot more to it, I'm sure. But for the meantime, I wanted to just say that my imagination in terms of these airships, I am thinking there's something so real about this because of the Ze Zeppelins. Okay, I love the name Zeppelin. Are, were you into the rock music? by Led Zeppelin. I was always intrigued by the name and didn't know much about Zeppelins, but now I'm looking more into them. But just taking in the ultra imaginative just look of them, just everything about if you love ships that sail on the ocean and to imagine ships that sail through the air above the clouds. Amazing and really roomy inside. Some of the pictures you'll notice that in the Zeppelins, they have full dining areas and they had a chef on board and, you know, pretty glamorous. So they were flying these all around and 
What are we to believe? It all just stopped? All of this technology? I am very intrigued, to say the least. Another thing that I was intrigued and surprised about the Nelly story was the private trains that a lot of people had and just how many points of travel you could make. It looked like it was pretty convenient. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it also looked like the steamships were convenient as well. So the the trains that went across, you know, from the east to the west, stopping off in all the major cities and Chicago or Chicago was a midpoint uh, gateway to the west. And the interiors of the trains, what did you think about those? Wow. Like, I know Joseph made a comment, and I can relate that it feels strangely familiar. Isn't it nostalgic? And I can't explain it, everyone, but I will elaborate on it when we get together for a night class. Because I was even talking to John about the fact that I remember in Philadelphia, just growing up in West Philadelphia, where my grandparents lived, and they lived 5542 Locust Street. And on that block, there were so many people of different backgrounds. I mean, it was amazing that everybody lived so harmoniously. There were um, these... Armenian sisters that lived across, they were older, well, you know, mid, mid-age mid women, and they were both widowed. And when I would see them, they had these beautiful, lacy kind of, you know, ruffly dresses, but they, you know, went up high on their neck, and they were long black dresses, and they wore their hair up in a bun, and they were mourning because, you know, they were widowed. So they lived together. And then there was another sister uh, combo that lived a couple of doors down from my grandmother, grandparents' home. And uh, don't say that I was uh, playing into the matriarchy by saying my, my grandmother's home. I'm sorry to my papa, my grandparents' home, okay? But yeah, we did have a matriarchy on the, on, I mean, we'll talk about that later. Kind of, sort of, I don't know. Don't get mad at me. Okay, listen. But anyway, um, a, a couple of doors down, it was a couple of women, uh, you know, supposedly you know the name black black women okay you know i don't like that term anymore i don't i don't know what to call people melanated i like melanated okay two melanated women um and uh they were sisters that were widowed as well they lived uh you know in the home uh, I'm thinking it was just two doors down, yeah. So everyone had porches, and you know, you would see people sweeping and mopping their porches, painting the floors, and just taking such good care. The homes were just meticulously appointed. Everyone had their hydrangea bushes. My grandmother had amazing hydrangeas that turned blue and pink and all these colors, and Her porch was just another room of the home. You know, we spent time on the porch and then your neighbor spent time on the porch and especially in the spring and summers, you're just going out on the porch and you're not spending so much time um, inside, say, watching television because your your block, your neighborhood was kind of entertaining, right? <laughs> because you had characters. Right? Do you remember this kind of thing? You had certain characters, a little bit of drama and intrigue, but nothing on the criminal level that would rise to make it dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Whatever people were doing, they were hiding it pretty well. It was not like it is now, just out there and right in your face. But people were more traditional, I'll say that. So you would sit on your porch and nice breezes would come through. And you're talking, you're having sort of conversations with your family who's sitting on the porch. But 
You're also having conversations with your neighbors as they're sitting on the porches on their gliders. You remember the gliders that would just glide, you sit on them, and some people would decorate their porches to look like, you know, like their home. And they were cozy, like my grandmother had beautiful gliding furniture. You know, she had a gliding sofa and she had other chairs out there and and she had beautiful it just it was just so beautiful you know what i'm saying and it was a different time but to go back to the point i wanted to make that i was talking to john about on monday was that my grandfather he worked at rca so camden new jersey across the river he would go to work because camden and you know other places like Cherry Hill, New Jersey, they're just like Philadelphia. You could just look across the uh, river and see them. So it was no big deal to go to Camden to work. So my grandfather, he worked at RCA and he was just an elect electrical engineer. I, you know, I really didn't know what his role officially when he went to work. And I still really don't know. I just know that he, he trained in electrical sciences. He worked at RCA and he worked all kinds of different entrepreneurial things. Like he was amazing. I'll talk about him at another time. Uh, but he would fix televisions on the side, you know, people would bring their televisions and there were these tubes that he would fix the tubes. I would see him doing some of the work. He had like a little uh, area in the basement in the cellar. And, you know, it was just amazing. Like it was even a sewing machine down in the uh, basement my grandmother had inherited. And it was one of those sewing machines, a singer, very heavy iron type of, uh, you know, thing. And you know, I mentioned you were not going to go into people's homes and steal these kind of things. They were so heavy, very solid. And, you know, the substance of it all was on a level that was so high quality. So my grandfather would do, like I said, the, fix the televisions for people. And I would notice that other people had certain technology in the homes. I can't explain it other than I have a memory of the technology that I would say might have one foot in Antiquatech and then one foot in the Industrial Revolution um, and the technology that came out of it. So Antiquatech is what intrigues me because I can remember looking at even light bulbs and things like that or even the tubes from the television and the technology of it the metals and everything that they used it was something of again a higher quality and something of a different world realm so if you experience the nostalgic feelings from looking at these airships let me know in the comments just drop some words because I love the engagement that we have and I'm really looking forward to a live stream I'm looking at maybe scheduling it tomorrow again let me know if you're available <laughs> all right but uh, in the meantime have a beautiful day. I love you and God bless you.
Thank you.